Hello and good morning, everybody. What a wonderful, uh, well, it's not as wonderful as it could be, but it's a wonderful city. I came to Stockholm about 15 years ago. I was surprising my wife with a, a break, and I told her we were going to Scotland, and then she found out at Heathrow that we were coming to Stockholm. It's a beautiful city. It was minus 25 degrees that February. It was incredible. Uh, my name is Adnan Nawaz. As it says, my day job is uh, working in the BBC's London studios, uh, broadcasting on BBC World News. So basically what I do in my everyday job is look at international news stories. And uh, it becomes obvious very quickly that globalization, it's not an aspiration, it's a complete reality. You may know that just a few weeks ago, a free trade deal was signed, and it was signed between countries that make up 40% of the global economy, it's the Trans-Pacific Partnership. And whether you're in that area of the world or not, it's going to affect everybody, every business, every person. China is not a member of the TPP. But China, like everybody, is not standing still. No one can afford to do that. One development, this was uh, under a month ago. Camtel from Cameroon, you'll probably know this because you're in the industry. Camtel from Cameroon and China Unicorn announced plans to build an underwater cable. It will go from Africa, from Kribi in the Caribbean, 6,000 kilometers under the, under the Atlantic, and it will reach Fortaleza in Brazil. It's Huawei Marines technology that's going to be used, and it's going to be the 100G technology. So these are the business opportunities that globalization brings. But of course, we know that travel and tourism, uh, migration, which we're seeing at the moment. All of these things are aspects of globalization. What is the common denominator, of course? It's us, it's people, okay? We're the common denominator that benefits from globalization and the change that comes with it, and we can't ignore it whether we want to or not. It's us. So if we're the common denominator affected by change, we can also say, surely, that uh, technology is what allows that change to happen, right? We're the agents of change. We're the ones who force it. But the technology is the thing that gives us the opportunity to force that change. So then the question becomes for businesses, how best do you position yourself to take advantage of those opportunities of uh, that change? How do you make sure that you're not left behind? How do you find your own space, right? So Living Connections, that's the title of today's symposium, hosted by Telia Sonera. And today's gathering is the fourth year that this event is taking place. Last year's theme, if you were here, you'll know, it was M2M is now. But actually, now we can say that M2M was then, because the future is here. You know, it sounds science fiction-like, but actually the future is here. So it's what's happening today, but it's also what's going to happen in the future. And therefore, one of the words that you hear very, very often in IoT is imagine, because you have to imagine. It's coming, okay? So you have to imagine and you have to invent for what's going to happen in the future. And that's another reason why we're here today, of course, right? Okay, so five weeks ago, these are more news lines that come to me when I'm sitting at the news desk. And this one struck me. I thought, okay, I'm coming here. I've got to tell you about this one. And you'll probably know it already, right? Um, the computer maker Dell, it struck a deal to buy a storage company called EMC Corp. How much did Dell pay? $67 billion. It's a record in the industry. Because of Dell, of course, has to reposition itself, right? It wants to get involved in this uh, space of storage because there are more devices connected to the internet than there are human beings on the planet. So use the word imagine, and imagine how much data that produces. $67 billion. Okay, so we're talking about Internet of Things, you know, as well as I do. We're talking about smart cities. We're talking about smart homes. We're talking about uh, healthcare. Incredible developments in healthcare, and I'll give you some examples later, okay, because right now is not about me. I'm just giving you a general introduction before we hear from the experts. But okay, what about the data? The data is an important commodity. The disruptive innovations that are possible are endless, right? We're talking about the physical ones that individuals find helpful in their own daily lives, but also the ones that the customer doesn't see, the ones that you companies can develop to drive your business. So today we're going to hear about the ways that increased connectivity will bring with it data that can create pl plenty of additional values to your businesses. These are the living connections that come from IoT, and the data as Dell has shown, it believes, of course, we all know it has to be stored, it has to be managed, and historical data will be just as important as real-time data. 
connected to that is security. It's a common belief that without extreme security, the Internet of Things will not achieve its full potential. So we're being hosted by Telios and Era because the company wants to, like many of you, position itself in this market of connecting things and then creating these new values that come from those connections. And the values, they go beyond the devices themselves. The device is one thing, but then it's the business providing the infrastructure to be able to carry the information, right? It's both of those, the infrastructure that makes the connectivity possible. And the fact that we're all using our smart, smart devices more today than we were at this time last year, that just shows how much data there is and how much desire for connectivity there is. We're going to hear about all these things today. We're going to have presentations, we'll have discussions. Hopefully, you'll be able to. It's important that you exchange ideas with each other because Telios uh, partner network has brought together the experts in this field, and you'll see some of the companies, just some of them, displaying themselves around the room, but there are others that aren't, and they're here. So connect with each other and connect with us as well. You can use the hashtag IoT Living Connections. Clearly one word, hashtag IoT Living Connections. Any observations you ha may have about what's happening on stage, any questions you may have that come from the presentations you're about to hear, I'll try to incorporate them if I can into our panel debate, which will happen later. Uh, there are more than 350 of you here today, 25 of Telia Sonera's partner networks are represented. Uh, you all come from more than 13 different countries. There's a live stream of this uh, going out onto the internet. It will also be available to all of you attendees, but also to other people if they want to access it afterwards as well. So the details of what's going to happen this morning in this room is, uh, for the moment. In the afternoon, everything will happen to that side of the building. There'll be more in-depth uh, presentations that you can attend. It's all the information is in your programs, so pick and choose what most interests you. But this morning, we're going to hear presentations from Telia Sonera, from Ericsson and Microsoft, and then we'll have uh, a little break, and then uh, we'll hear from a professor from King's College in London. Uh, get your questions in early so that I can incorporate them, if possible, into that panel debate. Okay, so that's it from me for the moment. Um, First, we're going to hear from Telia Sonera. The title of this opening presentation is New Generation Telco, Enabling Real IoT Solutions and Creating New and Disruptive Business Models. Hans Dahlberg is here. He's head of Telia Sonera's M2M Global Services. With Hans on stage is Soren Abdelgaard, who is the Chief Commercial Officer for Telia Sonera. They wanted me to talk about the football. One is Swedish, one is Danish, but I'm not going to. <laughs> Gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm the Danish chap, so we're definitely not going to be talking about football. Not today. Not with <laughs> a bunch of Swedes in the room. Uh, very, very warm welcome to all of you. It's fantastic to see so many people joining up for this event. Um, also because it's a mix of customers and especially partners, because it's one thing that we learn in this area is nobody can develop this on their own. This is something we do in partnership. So I'm, I'm particularly thankful for all the partners that are here with us today. I think today is going to be a day where we hear about new things, but it's also a day where we can talk to each other. And one of the downsides of the internet is that we don't necessarily get to see each other face to face all the time. Uh, but today we do, and today we can talk about exactly that. I'm very excited about the title, uh, Living Connections. I like that because M2M is fine, but M2M sort of signals that there are no people in this. And the reason why we do this is because there are people in this. And the reason why this has an effect is because this develops the world for the benefit of people. That's why we're here. So the new gen telco for, for Telia is moving into this space, moving into the space where we can provide services with other people to help develop the world. We've seen this market moving from a stage where it's been good ideas, it's been startups, to actually being a market where revenues are generated now. We are connecting products in our living rooms. We are connecting, you try and see my kids, if they didn't have the connections they did today, I have three kids, they're born in the online era, if they didn't have what they had today, and they have a good idea about what's going to happen in the future, 
then they will be a very, it will be a very sad home in our home. And I think we, uh, we sometimes forget the importance of going forward and pushing the boundaries, but not in this group. You guys are the ones who actually make that happen. So we're here to connect people in different ways, in new ways, and in ways that none of us thought were possible just going back a few years. All right. When we look at the Nordics today, in the Nordics, we're actually some of the leading companies here. And we look at uh, Finland. They have on-demand buses today. When we look at energy consumption, optimizing that in Stavanger, that's something we do through uh, IoT. When we look at healthcare, today we all go to the doctor. We all go to the hospital for checkups. A lot of that's going to be happening at home. I went to a Google uh, presentation two years ago, and I signed up. To, uh, how many know about Scanadu? Hands up. Not many people. Scanadu is a little device, and two years ago, that was pretty revolutionary. It's a little device you put up to your forehead, and then it'll tell you what's your blood pressure, what's your um, pulse, what's your uh, oxygen in your blood. And that was pretty revolutionary two years ago, because you didn't have all these different devices. But the idea and the vision was that not to take it there, but actually have a little microchip put into your blood that will measure all of this. And it will be able to predict if you're about to have a heart attack in three years' time. Oh, sorry, three days' time. Then better see a hospital. Three years' time might be a bit early. And then the whole idea is, would people really allow that? Would people really, would you guys insert a little microchip into your veins and it'll tell you, would you really want to know? And this guy that talked about this, who's running Scanadu for Singularity University, he thought, no, maybe not everybody, and not to start off with, but he would. It's just like somebody wants to go to Mars. In Norway, we have the, most, the biggest amount of connected homes in the world today. So they're really on the forefront here. In Denmark, we do have uh, medical devices being connected out there. And we do see that the opportunity for sales here is bigger and bigger. This year alone in the Nordics, this market is worth four billion. And over the next three years, it's going to increase by 23% year on year. It's going to be more than nine billion. And that may even be a conservative estimate. So that's why we're here. We can make a change for human beings and for development in the world, but we can also make money. But one thing we've learned in this industry, if we want to make money off this, you have to capture the first move advantage. If you're number five or number six down the line, you'll be struggling with cost. So you guys who have all the great ideas, you are the ones that can bring this forward and make the money of these devices and these opportunities. Connecting people, connecting devices, and making sure that we can all be living in a new world. So thank you very much for coming here today. Hans Dahlberg, you are one of the guys that's going to tell us a little bit about how we are doing this and how we in Tilius on Era want to pitch into this. So over to you. Thank, thank you, you, sir. Thank you. Again, a very warm welcome. For those uh, who know me personally or m uh, my group, you all know that this is like Christmas Eve for us. Um, this is our fourth year. Uh, the first year, we announced our cooperation with Ericsson. That created the best of worlds when it comes to connectivity platforms for the Nordics when it comes to IoT. You also remember our announcement and a partnership with Tesla. In those days, not all of you have heard about Tesla, and even fewer had actually test drive one. So we an announced that, and a few of you actually got the possibility to drive uh, around the city. Um, I know some police officers had some problem that day. Last year, we announced the MTM in a box. M to M in a box was our way of simplifying the entrance in IoT. 
enabling companies actually to take a part of IoT without having these huge investments. We had this um, bike messenger who actually drove around the city with the M2 in a box inside. And since then, the M2 in a box have, through our partners, gone globally. M2 in a box, we could see it in Swedish churches or in delivery food trucks. So it has been a great success. We have also done more things. Since uh, last year, we did an investment in a company called Springbergs. And I often talk about what's the fundamental for growth in, in the Nordics, because we are leading the way when it comes to IoT. And I often say that it's a combination of big companies working with small entrepreneurial high-quality companies. And that's the combination of both that creates a great value. So from this, you will see even more things. Well, living connection. Living connections sums up what we think is value creation. Because if we have multiple devices, and you could take that data and share it, this will actually be the fundamental for new business models and new experience. Everything could actually be transformed. And something everyone talks about is the connected car. The connected car has, until today, been for these people who actually could afford to buy a premium car. So, for the most of us, or maybe not the most, for me, you maybe could afford it, but for the most of us, uh, it has been a dream. Today, we are launching something that could change things for millions of car owners. So, with that said, let us see it. This is Telia Sense. This is just a car. It could be any car. It could be my car or your car. In Sweden alone, since 2001, there has been 3 million cars sold. What we are doing today is launching or announcing Telia Sense. Globally, the world's first, at least so advanced and comprehensive car solution. What does it then? Well, it actually brings your car where it should be, into your mobile phone. What does it consist of? Well, of course, there are some techie things. There sh should always be some techie things. Uh, first of all, what you do is you take this little plug, plug it into your car. We use the onboard diagnostics interface, which is in every car from 2001 or 2004, if you have a diesel. You plug it in, it takes out data from the car. You also, within this, you have 2G, 3G, 4G, a lot of Gs. And of course, uh, you have a battery, a GPS, and these kind of things. Then, you combine that with a very smart cloud services, and an app. But it's actually not just an app or this hardware. We are creating more. What is then unique with this? Well, it consists of three parts. And the first part is the Wi-Fi hotspot. So think about it, if you have, especially if you're having kids, 
and go on a ski vacation. They are used to use the internet everywhere. So what we have created with this solution is that it enables multiple devices for your own Wi-Fi hotspot in the car. And it calms you down, at least if you are driving the car, to the ski slopes, I promise you. The second part of it is what we call car control. The car control gives you control over the health of the car. It could be the battery, it could be fuel, it could be if something is wrong, it's time for service. But it not only that, it's actually use the cloud, the hardware, in order to create a geofence around your car, give you alerts. Uh, another example, if you are living in a flat here at uh, Södermalm, you probably will park your car not directly outside the port of your building, it will be a few blocks away. If you have a burglary within your car, it will start beeping, but you probably will not, not, not notice this. With Telia Sense, of, you, of course you get an alert for that. But it could be that you uh, think about the environment and what want some extra support for helping you driving, uh, driving in a more economy, uh, better environmental way. Then of course you have eco driving. Could be that you are at, uh, which happened actually for me last weekend. My wife, she's a very clever, intelligent woman, but sometime, ah, there are some things. One thing was that we should go to Ikea on a Sunday afternoon. That was a bit of a hassle, but after a few hours at Ikea, we couldn't remember where the car was. Then you have the car control that enables you to find the car. So there's a lot of things within car control. But there is more, and maybe the most important thing is not what we are doing. Again, is, it is what we as an ecosystem could do with partners. Our view on this, that we are enabling a platform that actually our partners could take our solution to the next step. So, what kind of partners are we talking about? Well, we are talking about a, a vast number of partners. It could be from insurance companies. It could be uh, repair shops. And uh, instead of me standing here and talking about our partner's value proposition within the, the Telia Sense, I would like to wel welcome one of our partners, the biggest insurance company, in Sweden, and the CEO for that. Jens, what's your view on Telia Sense? Good. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Thank you. Here. Thank you very much, Hans. Thank you. It's, uh, it's very good to be here uh, uh, to spend uh, Christmas Eve with, with you and, and your friends. Uh, and it's, uh, I think Adnan said it, it's very dark outside not only literally, but also uh, poli politically. Uh, and uh, I must say, e in that sense, it feels extra good to be here. Uh, the light coming uh, from on me, uh, which brights up the world. And I think when you look on technology, uh, that is one of the few driving forces now that have bring some intrinsically good I in the world. And there's an optimism to it, which makes me uh, very happy. Now, I'm not going to be here standing talking to you about the Internet of Things and big data uh, and things like that, because you all know it better than me. And why do you then invite a dinosaur like me, sort of, I'm seeing I'm the only, only one wearing a tie, uh, uh, representing an... I was thinking about it. Yeah, <laughs> thinking doesn't help. Um, 
representing an insurance company uh, that has more than a hundred years uh, of insurance uh, business. We represent every, we have sort of almost every second Swede. And I've now been the CEO for more than two years. And um, basically the insurance company I inherited was a company doing very good, but with a chaotic IT system below the hood. I think we have over 950 systems and in many ways we work very similar to an Indian ATM. People punch in things and then we print it out and print it in again. Uh, so I've invested now almost two years and we're up to investing, if we look at our sort of running cost, we invest every one crown out of six we invest in, in IT and trying to make us uh, a more and better company and working together with Telia in, uh, and Telia Sense has been uh, one part of it. Now then you say, okay, so how much has insurance have to do with IT? Well, I can tell you insurance is IT and IT is insurance. Uh, just imagine what will happen in the future when Google starts their own insurance company and if you Googled on prostate cancer, can you imagine whether you will, uh, if you've done that, search for that 10 times, do you think your premium will go up or down if you uh, are sort of uh, trying for a life insurance? The industry will change. We will try to do this change and we will try to participate in this change and do it in a way that um, sort of make us still the decent company that makes the good things uh, for people uh, that think uh, about the customer. Uh, I'd like to show you a short film as well. We can do films as well, not as fancy as the rest of, of you because we're an old insurance company, <laughs> but uh, uh, let's see. And I'm not sure there is much uh, even music on it. So <laughs> <let's see. laughs> När du skaffar Folksam Köra säkert får du en indikator. Den lyser grönt när du håller rätt hastighet och hjälper dig. Det lönar sig att köra säkert. Folksam för allt du bryr dig om. So for more than 30 years Folksam has been conducting research into traffic and the reason is because we are committed to our customers driving more safely. And from the beginning, we were the ones that pointed out how roads should be built in order to save lives. It's now difficult to do much more with our roads in order to improve safety. Then we started working with car manufacturers to optimize cars to make driving safer. We have made specific contributions towards safer car seats for kids, the development of whiplash protection, and seat belts, just to name a few examples. The car and the traffic environment has been modified as much as they can while still being financially adjustable. In this film we just show you, you saw glimpses of our current direction. One natural next step is to use the Köra säkert, or in English, drive, si drive safely uh, service to help the driver and to change the driver's uh, uh, driving behavior. So it's no coincidence that Folksam is starting its journey into the field of connected insurance, specifically in the area of cars. So what we are doing is we are using TeliaSense technology to offer our car insurance customer the drive safely service. It's a service that we'll be offering on a voluntary basis to our car insurer customers starting in spring 2016. What it does is that it includes something that is known as an indicator that we have developed. And the, in, uh, the indicator is installed in the car and gives the driver immediate feedback on the observation of speed limits. And the in indicator gives instant feedback to you as a driver, simply and reliable. If you go over the speed limit, 
you get a red light. We know that this is precisely, exactly the direct feedback, feedback while you're driving that generates a significant change in driving behavior. And we know that if you cut your speed by three kilometers an hour, the risk of an accident is reduced by about 5%, and the risk of personal injury by about 10%, and the risk of a fatality by about 15%. So by doing this, by taking down the speed, we uh, will take down, uh, make 40 people uh, in Sweden live longer. Now in the Drive Safely service, we are combining our knowledge from our traffic research with the opportunity provided by the new technology to help customers keep uh, to the speed limit. And we know that everyone can become a safe driver through a change in behavior. The service is accompanied by a reward to the customer, which is integrated into our car insurance policy. Once more, Drive Safely is based on a voluntary participation. The normal insurance policy continues even if the customer does not want to use the Drive Safely. And this is Folksam's first step when it comes to connected insurance policies. We are now dealing with ex existing cars. My eight-year-old Toyota will have this. And the next step will also be to consider solutions for new cars. And as the car, the home, we as individuals and society at large become more connected, there are major opportunities for us to contribute to a safer everyday life in general for our customers. Ultimately, Drive Safely is all about enabling a behavioral change by offering a car insurance policy that contributes toward safer driving. Someone may wonder, aren't self-driving cars the solutions to safe driving? I think that's an absolute true, but it will be many years before self-driving cars are in the majority on our roads. We don't want to wait to give our customers a service that makes them safer on the road, a service that actually saves lives. While we wait for those self-driving cars to seriously take over the roads, Thanks to this new te technology, Drive Safely can make it si safer to drive our kids to the football training and not only drive Teslas around the city. Thank you. Thank you, Jens. <laughs> Just a few questions. Shoot. What do you think is the overall, or do you have any idea of the impact of IoT within the insurance industry? I think it will have a great impact, and I think that we do not really realize how big the impact it will be. I think it will be everything from sort of uh, health insurance to insurance on, on houses and, thing, uh, and, and cars and, and behavior. Uh, so it will be a dramatic change for us in the industry. Yeah, and the next question. Today, Telia Sense, we are actually helping the vast majority of three million car owners, what should be the next step? I can't tell that now, but I think w what is important for us, and I think that's the most important part of, of this insurance, is that an insurance company, you might think that the easiest way for us to make more money, mm. and we're a customer of not company, so if we make more, more money, we would just cut the premiums. Uh, but then you would say that, okay, to sort of have uh, people uh, to get down the cost of claims. Mm. Well, honestly, that's not the most important thing. I think the most important thing for us is to avoid claims. Mm. Because a, a, a car uh, that does, doesn't crash, mm. a car that doesn't drive too fast, that will be sort of the big impact. So I think the big impact will not be the technology as such, but the technology, uh, imp the technological impact that will behave how customers uh, react in this. So I think the, the important part, as always, are not the technology, yeah. and I'm sorry to say that, uh, you look like a typical engineer. I think uh, <laughs> uh, the important part is the way mm. how people mm. interact. Mm. And I think that will be the main uh, uh, change with Internet of Things, that in your everyday life you will see a different behavior. Yeah. That will be good for us and will be good for our customers. Thank you, Jens. Thank, Thank you. you. Changing behaviors. 
And that's living connection, isn't it? But we have more partners telling their story about Telia Sense. So please welcome Per from Vilja. All right, so you might ask yourselves, why are we here? Um, and I'm here to tell a little bit how we feel that Telia Sense is um, a good fit to our strategy. Now, Bilia, as uh, most of you know, is a large Nordic car retailer. We sell roughly 80,000 cars per year, and we are present at 100 point of sales throughout Scandinavia um, and also in Germany. Um, now, being a car dealer, um, you need two things. You need to drive customer satisfaction, and you need to drive availability. Um, the way to drive customer satisfaction to us is that we need to find constantly ways to develop what we call an attractive car ownership, or in Swedish, ett attraktivt bilägande. Now, through the years, we have tried to develop this, and we can see that as long as we launch new innov innovative products and services, this drives customer satisfaction. Customer satisfaction, in turn, also drives loyalty, and loyalty drives profitability. Uh, and the way the digi digitalization wave is going now, our view is that it's now really kicking in. It's been 20 years ago since we started talking about Wi-Fi, uh, hotspots on trains, on planes, and now in cars, and it's finally happening after 20 years. Um, what we've done is, is um, um, about 15, 20 years ago, taxi drivers needed to, to have an uh, evening open workshop in the middle of Stockholm, so we did that for them. When we saw the need for 24-7 open phone lines, we started with that. Uh, when we saw the need uh, for to be able to communicate better on our websites, we developed pretty intense functions on our website where you now can browse all our cars, you can make reservations in workshops, etc. And therefore, we feel that Telia Sense is now just the next step. Um, and soon, we will be available in this new service. Uh, on the customer side, and so why do you th we think the customers will like this? I think you've already seen a couple of good examples uh, here. So, I mean, obviously, if we can give advice from remote to our customers and they don't need to come into the workshop, it's going to be uh, it's going to be a clear given uh, customer satisfaction key point. At least we hope so. Um, if we can monitor the battery of your car and say, listen, your battery is voltage is really low. If you don't come in and change it tomorrow, it might not start. Um, we think it's going to be great value to our customers. We also see, I mean, if you have, if we can see that you still have your winter tires in our tire hotels, and you haven't changed it, then it's, and it's a blizzard coming, uh, we can also alert you to sort of make it the, the preventive maintenance a lot easier and also avoid collisions as, as, uh, with the same goal as Folksam, basically. Um, and besides from that, there seems to be unstoppable demand for new Wi-Fi hotspots. Thank so you, So in Pat. short. Um, how will Telia Sense fit into your strategy? Uh, well, I guess it's all about uh, uh, the customer satisfaction point. I mean, obviously, I mean, if if this is seen as a new and innovative product to the um, uh, to our customers, this will drive satisfaction. We've seen it in the past, and we're sure that we will see it in the future. Uh, and what about you've been in the car industry for a few years, I guess? Uh, what do you think will be the first customer reaction to this? This is something that's very closely also now in new cars. And I think what people don't realize is that's now going to be available also for all kinds of cars. Mm. Uh, so it's not only your Tesla, it's not only in brand new Volvos, mm. but it's going to be available for all cars. Okay. Mm. Thank you, Per. Thank you. <laughs> all right. To sum this up, we are announcing the Telia Sense. And a special thanks to Springworks, who has uh, done a lot of things within the uh, Telia Sense. And also Ericsson, by the way, that's a few of the partners that has been together with us. And, and the partners together with us is creating living connection. But again, very warm welcome. And remember one thing. Telia doesn't make cars. We make cars awesome. Thank you. You remember how it started? We put connectivity in the hands of man, and the world changed. It took us from the telegraph to the telephone, from fax to SMS, and further on to the internet, social media, 
and hashtags. Today it's a global movement, empowering billions of people, bringing the world closer by letting people create, explore and invent, share and reach out. In just the same way, the car revolutionized the world. From the T Ford and all the way to the Tesla, cars redefined transportation and driving changed the game forever. Today, things will change again. We are joining the best of two worlds. We are connecting the car. This is the advent of a new ecosystem and the dawn of new possibilities. Cars as you know them will never be the same again. We gear you up to avoid traffic jams and endless searches for empty parking lots, simplifying car ownership. We'll make sure you're in the driving seat to save cash, time and the environment. That you won't have to step into a freezing car ever again. And that your family will have a fun and safe road trip. It's a beautiful fusion between great innovations. We don't make cars, we make cars awesome.